uh, part of this program. I'm on the board of the China Society, and uh, I'm not Chinese. Did you maybe notice? I, uh, but I was invited, actually, because of that. And the China Society's mission is to really be a bridge between China and the Chinese people and uh, uh, America and the world. So uh, we're a very uh, confused organization. We're, we, <laughs> We have everybody there. It's just a big family, the China Society. So, uh, and I, on, the, on their behalf, I'd like to welcome you and also uh, a, a very significant uh, vice chairman of the board of the China Society uh, is Dr. Her. And we've worked together for now several years. And uh, really, I'm amazed at, at his effort, not just in the United States, but also in China. He is everywhere and seems to know everybody. So uh, we're really... Uh, grateful that we could uh, establish this partnership today uh, to, again, tackle this very important uh, topic on, I think, the most important, uh, relating to the most important bilateral relationship on the planet, for sure. That's been true for a long time, but actually evident to almost everyone at this time, by now. And uh, so uh, this effort is very important. Uh, this partnership is important, and uh, so your partnerships uh, here also is very important. And I wanted to welcome uh, some of the people visiting from the Global Young Leaders Academy also that are in, engaging Capitol Hill this week, and World Bank and uh, the State Department doing very important work. And uh, glad you could join us also. So uh, without uh, further ado, I'd like to welcome our uh, moderator for today, Mr. Tad Ferris. Thanks, John. Fei Da, the Zhongwen means is Fei Da, Fa Da Da Da, Fei Zhang Fei. I am Vice Chair of the International Fund for China's Environment and have the honor of welcoming you all here, uh, also uh, welcoming our distinguished speakers for the day and discussants. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on uh, introductions, but I do want to thank uh, Senator Ben Cardin's and Congressman Gregory Meeks' offices for helping host this today, as well as, again, the China Society and all of our friends at the International Fund for China's Environment. This is very much a collaborative effort, uh, and a lot of the activities that you see us involved in are by no means just a single individual's work effort. Uh, but the efforts of a number of groups, just as you see here today. I have the honor of first introducing uh, Jane Nishida. Uh, Jane is Acting Assistant Administrator for the Environmental Protection Agency's Office of International and Tribal Affairs. Uh, Jane served previously as the Director of the Office of Regional and Bilateral Affairs within uh, the same office, Implementation in tribal lands, but also in sovereign nations outside of the U.S., China being, as John mentioned, one of the most prominent of those, and uh, a relationship uh, that we are discussing right now with uh, Chinese representatives, as well as one that is often in the news, and uh, certainly for those among us who are concerned with China. Environmental issues, both transboundary and domestic, uh, this is a very important topic. So with that, and no further ado, please join me in welcoming uh, Jane Nishida for comments. Thank you. Uh, welcoming, and uh, since Tad uh, took it upon himself to also talk about his Chinese name, uh, because in uh, my last name, Nishida, the characters are Xi Tian. So, ni hao. Um, again, I'd like to thank the host today, um, uh, obviously the China Society and the International Fund for China's Environment, uh, as well as Senator Cardin and Congressman Meek's office for organizing this important event. Um, as Tad mentioned, and um, as we are all acutely aware, U.S. and China share, um, obviously, a very important bilateral relationship. In fact, for U.S. EPA, our China program is the, our largest international program within EPA. Uh, and we share not only environmental ch challenges and priorities, but we also, as world leaders, uh, our environmental cooperations and how we advance uh, the issues such as clean air and clean water 
are important not only bilaterally between U.S. and China, but also globally, uh, again, in terms of setting the stage in terms of what the international community might do, whether it's on climate change, et cetera. So today what I would like to do is to share a snapshot of the cooperative work program that we have between U.S. EPA and our principal uh, counterpart agency in China, which is the Ministry of Environmental Protection. It's very timely that I was asked to speak today um, because this week, um, U.S. and China, our two governments, have had uh, just uh, concluded uh, what we call the 10-year framework for energy and environment dialogue. Um, the, this was a dialogue that was led on the U.S. side by the U.S. Department of State and on the China side uh, by the Natural Development and Reform Commission, or NDRC. It is also timely because EPA and um, MEP, the Ministry of Environmental Protection, has a joint um, committee for environmental cooperation. We just concluded our fourth uh, annual meeting, or our fourth biannual meeting, uh, just last December where Administrator McCarthy and I were in Beijing to essentially review our formal work program and to uh, identify cooperations for the upcoming program. So what I'd like to do is to highlight some of the priorities in our bilateral cooperation in, in terms of the, the JCEC work that I just mentioned, as well as some of the priorities that were also highlighted this week in the 10-year framework. Uh, before I begin, I do want to apologize in advance. Unfortunately, I mean, the good news is I'm here speaking to you, uh, but unfortunately I did have to rearrange my schedule to um, come today but it means I have to rush back uh, to the agency uh, to, to attend the meeting that I'm supposed to be in uh, right now. Uh, so I apologize for making my visit short, but I did, because of the importance of this meeting, did want to at least um, share some um, time with you. First, let me explain to you the EPA MEP MOU, or our cooperation. We have a memorandum of understanding, again, with our principal agency, the Ministry of Environmental Protection. It is a comprehensive MOU. We have been in cooperation with China for 33 years. So our MOU essentially covers six uh, important areas, and we have annexes in each of these areas with specific work plans of activities that will guide the two countries in terms of our environmental cooperation. The six areas are improving air quality, protecting water resources, strengthening chemical safety, addressing uh, waste issues, strengthening environmental enforcement, and enhancing environmental laws and institutions. As we look to the work that we've done over the last uh, 30 years and the structure of our collaboration, we are very pleased that we have evidence to, to demonstrate um, how our collaboration has advanced um, air pollution issues, water pollution issues, chemicals, et cetera, in both of our countries. We have a lot, uh, as I mentioned, of shared challenges, but also of shared lessons learned and of sharing uh, solutions to address these problems. So what I would like to do is to highlight two in particular. But before I highlight the two um, priority areas, I want to say that the premise in which we engage with China is on what we refer to as the fundamental elements of an environmental ma management program, whether it's in the United States or China or in, or in another country. And these fundamental elements is that our decision making is based, is based on sound science, that we look to ensure the technical capacity of the regulatory agencies in which to implement and enforce laws. Um, we ensure that we do have uh, policies that are supported by science, sound science and by technical capacity, and that we also ensure that those laws are enforced. Uh, and then finally, we feel, feel very strongly in transparency and being able to share the knowledge that we have as agencies with the public and involve the public, in, obviously, in the environmental management uh, regime. 
So the two priority areas that have been identified, and again, we engage in many areas, but the two that probably have gotten the most press attention and perhaps uh, the most attention from you as well, the first is air quality. For those of you who have visited China or live in China, you know how severe, or you can just read the paper, how severe uh, air pollution has become in the metropolitan areas of China. So our collaboration on uh, clean air has brought together key national, provincial, and local, as well as business and NGO stakeholders to advance air quality policy, regulation, to introduce uh, innovative technology, and again, to share information with regards to the uh, quality of air and, and the measures that are necessary to control air pollution. Uh, so there are a number of ways that we are doing that. One of the ways is that we are supporting regional air quality management and implementation of multi-pollutant control of particulate matter, ozone, and VOCs, or volatile uh, organic compounds. For example, we are working with uh, Jiangsu province on a, a regional air quality plan because just as in the United States, you cannot ad address air quality just within the confines of Washington, D.C. or within the confines of Beijing, you have to look at it regionally because uh, air pollution, uh, both uh, sources of air pollution come from outside of the metropolitan area and likewise, the pollution that is in the metropolitan area is, is transported uh, outside of that metropolitan area. So we believe very strongly in a regional approach in which to address particularly the growing urban air quality uh, challenges. China has recently adopted um, a measure uh, that requires provincial and local governments to adopt clean air action plans. And we believe that our regional pilot will help inform other provinces and other local governments as they adopt their regional air quality plans or action plans. We are also uh, committed to fostering collaboration on different approaches for reducing uh, particulate matter and other pollution on on-road, non-road, and heavy-duty vehicle, uh, uh, vehicles, which is obviously a major source of pollution both in the United States as well as <coughs> China. So in our heavy-duty initiative, we have three components. We are looking at enhanced heavy-duty vehicle uh, fuel efficiency standards. We are also looking at clean fuels and, vi and, vi and vehicle emission control technologies. And then thirdly, the promotion of efficient and clean freight. Uh, freight. Um, so addressing not only, obviously, heavy-duty vehicles in terms of passenger vehicles, as well as in freight in terms of transport. Uh, uh, the other thing that we are looking at is the power sector. We are expanding our collaboration in the power sector to look at uh, new control policies for coal-fired coal -fired power plants, including, including looking at pollutants such as mercury. Uh, we are also um, in strengthening the continuing emissions monitoring system for power plants. We have agreed to work together also in the development of greenhouse gas uh, reporting, uh, both in terms of methodology as well as integrating data management systems, which we believe are the building blocks for China's now um, national uh, greenhouse gas registry um, that they are developing. We expect that the work that I just outlined above will help not only uh, improve clean air in China um, and, and improve public health, but also achieve co-benefits with regards to climate change, as well as to enhance the energy security challenges that China faces. So let me now move to another area, and that is in water, clean water issues. Again, this is another important priority for the U.S. EPA, um, MEP, uh, China MEP cooperation that we are doing under our Joint Committee for Environmental Cooperation. And it's also something that we discussed this past week in the 10-year framework between the two governments. Our priority areas in terms of the water um, sector is we want to improve water quality management. We're looking at permitting, surveillance, and standards development. 
We are also looking at um, safe supply of drinking water, including source water protection. Um, thirdly, we are looking at water pollution prevention and control, particularly in rural areas. This, and this will include non-point source uh, water pollution control strategies. We have learned, as I said, from each other's environmental challenges and have identified opportunities that not only inspire innovation in terms of policy development, but also in, in, in uh, spur innovation with regards to te technologies and investment in infrastructure and taking a pragmatic approach to addressing the water, ch uh, water challenges in China and the U.S. In the case of water, we have identified three pilot projects where we're installing technologies for conducting groundwater investigation and monitoring. We have also developed a sister state partnership uh, uh, that focuses on water resources management cooperation between state and provincial governments. And in this case, uh, the, we have been partnering with the state of Minnesota as well as Hubei province. And like in AIR, we are taking a comprehensive approach to water management, which as I, I just wanted to repeat, encompasses policy, technology, enforcement, and both national and local efforts in terms of capacity and um, strategies. So looking forward, we want to continue to uh, work together uh, with our Chinese counterparts to analyze um, uh, uh, clean water policies. Uh, in, in doing that, we are also in uh, looking at market-based instruments for water protection and infrastructure. We're looking at new policies like water quality trading, water discharge permits, watershed-based permits, and other innovative tools. So this is just a, a snapshot of two priority areas. As I mentioned, we are engaged in a number of other areas. We are also engaged with other ministries like the Ministry of Water Resources, the Ministry of Science and Technology, Craig's, the, the academic universities as well. But our principal interlocutory is with the Ministry of Environmental Protection. So with that, I just wanted to close to say again that I welcome the opportunity to speak to you and I want to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity.